Hello friends, welcome back to Medico Stranger. Today we will start the next video of one shot quick revision series on basic concepts of dental anatomy. This is the basic chapter of the uh, major topic in our human oral anatomy including histology and embryology that is dental anatomy part. First let us understand the different parts of a tooth. Tooth which is above the gingiva is called the crown and which is below the gingiva is called the root. Also there are hard tissues which are enamel, cementum and dentin. Enamel the outer covering above the gingiva that is in the crown portion, cementum in the root portion and dentin is within the enamel. And the soft tissue is the pulp which is below the dentin. Next, we will go on to the different surface structures that is different surface structures on the tooth which are uh, first which are uh, further divided on the basis of anteriors that is the incisors and the canines and the posteriors which are premolars and molars for incisors or canines that are for anteriors we have labial and for posteriors we have buccal both of these buccal and labial are the teeth surfaces which face towards the lips. Next we have the lingual. Lingual is both term used for both anteriors and posteriors and the lingual is for the surface which face towards the tongue. Next we have mesial which is towards the midline of the body and distal which is away from the midline of the body. And finally we have incisal or occlusal which is on the upper view of the tooth surface. Next, there is a very important question which is frequently asked in the exams and also in the viva that is what are line angles and what are point angles? Okay, friends, these two questions are very frequently asked in the viva also. So, let's learn this. So, for the first question is what is line angle? Line angle is generally formed by the junction of the two surfaces of tooth. So, it is, is a junction of the two surfaces of tooth. So, these are named based on the labial or the buccal, lingual, mesial, distal and the incisal and the occlusal junctions. Clearly, since these are formed by the two surfaces of the teeth, so they consist of six line angles. Okay. Next, we will move on to the point angles. What are these point angles? Point angles are nothing but they are just like the line angles but they are formed by the junction of three surfaces of the tooth. Okay, It is very important to note that the line angles are formed by the junction of two surfaces of tooth whereas the point angles are formed by the junction of three surfaces of tooth. Similarly, these are also named based on the labial lingual so dot 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 that is same as the line angles also since these are formed by the three surfaces so the posteriors or the anterior teeth consist of four point angles okay so there are six line angles and four point angles line angles are formed by the junction of two surfaces of tooth while the point angles are formed by the junction of three surfaces of tooth okay next we will move on to our next major topic which is and the basic um, main topic of our today's lecture that is what are these landmarks okay landmarks these landmarks are further divided okay these landmarks are further divided on the basis of elevations and depressions okay so landmarks are divided on the basis of elevations and depressions this further can be divided okay Friends, this further can be divided that is elevations. These elevations can be further divided into cusp, tubercle, cingulum and ridges. Okay. These landmarks uh, which is elevation can be further divided into ele cusp, tubercle, cingulum and ridges. While the depressions, while the depressions are further divided into fossa, sulcus grooves and pits that is fossa sulcus grooves and pits let's revise this what are elevations elevations are of four subtypes that is cusp tubercle 
singulum and reaches okay cursed tubercle singulum and reaches while the depressions are further subdivided into fossa sulcus grooves and pits okay these are further divided into fossa sulcus grooves and pits next we will learn each of these topic in detail in the next slides that is first we will learn what are elevations and their subtypes okay elevations so these elevations can be a uh, four types that we have already discussed that is cusp tubercle cingulum and reaches first we will learn about the cusp what are cusp okay cusp are the elevations or mount on the crown okay these are the elevations or mount on the crown next we have the tubercle okay tubercle first we have already learned that the cusps are the elevations or mounts on the crown next we have the tubercle tubercle are smaller than cusp okay these are similar to the cusp but they are smaller than the cusp and these are mainly formed due to the extra deposition or the extra formation to be more specific that is it is formed by the extra formation of the enamel okay tubercle are smaller than cusp and they are formed by the extra formation of the enamel okay next we will move on to the our third subtype that is what are cingulum what are cingulum cingulum are the griddles on the tooth okay these are the griddles friends we have a very important topic which is mammalian what are these mammalians mammalians are the mainly found in the newly erupted teeth and they are lost due to our masticatory stress while brushing chewing etc these are called mammalians okay next we have the ridges in our next slide that is what are ridges ridges are can be further divided also okay ridges can be further divided also into four types that is marginal ridge triangular ridge transverse ridge and oblique ridge okay first we'll define what are ridges ridges are the linear elevations okay ridges are the linear elevations these are further subdivided into marginal ridges triangular ridges transverse ridges and the oblique ridges we'll learn one by one each of these topic that is first what are marginal ridges marginal ridges are the linear round border okay so these marginal ridges are the linear round border of the enamel which forms mesial and distal margin of the tooth okay friends so these marginal ridges are the linear round border of the enamel which forms the mesial and the distal margin of the teeth next next we have the triangular ridge so we have already completed the marginal ridge which is the linear round border of the enamel which forms the mesial and the distal margin of the teeth next we have the triangular ridge what are these triangular ridges triangular ridges are nothing but they descend from the cuspal tips towards the center of the teeth okay they descend from the cusp of the tips that is they form they descend from the cusp towards the center of the teeth next also friends next we have the third subtype which is the transverse ridge the question is what are these transverse ridge transverse ridges are formed by the union of two triangular ridges in the transverse direction okay so to first understand the transverse ridge we have to uh, understand that triangular ridges okay so transverse ridge are nothing but they are formed by the union of two triangular ridges in transverse direction finally we have the last sub part of the ridges which is oblique ridge okay what are this oblique ridge this oblique ridge is very important for the viva question these are the this is the most frequent question asked in the viva table that is what do you mean by the transverse ridge and oblique ridge okay both this question transverse ridge and oblique ridge are most important for the viva question so the question is what are these oblique ridge oblique ridges are nothing but they extends from the triangular ridges of distobuscal cusp okay they extend from the triangular ridge of the distobuscal cusp to distal cusp they extend from the triangular ridge of the distobuscal cusp to the distal cusp of a mesiolingual cusp 
of maxillary molars only it's very important to know that this oblique ridge are present only in the maxillary molars okay only the maxillary molar and they extend from the triangular ridge of distobuccal cusp to distal cusp of the mesiolingual cusp in maxillary molars only okay all these uh, notes are given in the pdf format in the description box if you like you can download it from the description box okay next we'll move on to our next part sub part which is depression okay the question is what are these depressions depressions can be further divided into four types that is we have already studied that is what are these are fossa sulcus grooves and pits okay these four sub parts are fossa sulcus grooves and pits now we will learn each of these four subtypes in detail in this slide that is first we have come to the first sub part that is what are fossa okay what are fossa this fossa are nothing but the irregular depressions or concavity in the teeth okay they are the irregular depressions or the concavity present on the teeth next we have sulcus so the question arises what are these sulcus sulcus are the long depressions okay these are the long depressions or valley between the edges and the cusps that inclines the and meet at an angle so these sulcus are long depressions or valley between the edges and cusps that inclines and meet at an angle so these are longer than the fossa in in depth okay these are longer depressions okay so this longer depression can be called as valley and and these are present at the edges of the cusp so clearly it will form an angle so the definition of the sulcus becomes that the, it is a long depression or valley between the edges and the cusp and it inclines to meet at an angle next we have grooves so the question arises what are these grooves these grooves are the shallow linear depressions okay so the grooves are the shallow linear depressions present on the teeth surface okay these are shallow and the linear okay these two terms are very important to define grooves that is grooves are the shallow and they are the linear depressions present on the tooth surface finally we have the fourth subtype that is what are pits these pits are the small pinpoint depressions this word is very important to define pit that is pit are the small pinpoint depressions located that they are located at the junctions or the terminus of the developmental grooves okay they are the pinpoint depressions first we have to define that these are the pinpoint depressions and they located between the junctions or the terminus of the developmental groups okay next there is a very important question which is frequently asked in the exam paper okay mainly this question comes in the exam paper rarely this may be asked in the viva but mainly it comes in the exam paper that is what are lobes friends can you explain what are lobes so what are lobes lobes are the primary center of the formation of the tooth this is the basic definition of lobes what are lobes lobes are the primary center of the formation of the tooth now these lobes have some exceptions and some common that is first we will understand the two exceptions that is the second mandibular okay the second mandibular premolars and the second mandibular premolar and the first molars so it is very important to note that these two these three teeth that is two mandibular premolars second mandibular premolar and the first molars has five lobes okay second mandibular premolar and the first molar has five lobes this line is very important and often asked that is the second mandibular premolar and the first molar has five lobes all the other teeth has four lobes so all the other teeth have four lobes okay if you like my video then please subscribe the channel comment and comment your queries and share the video i will be uh, referring to next chapter that is the development of the growth and of the tooth we'll study the development and growth of the tooth in the next chapter if you like my videos then please subscribe the channel and comment your queries i will uh, try to 
answer your queries as fast as possible please share this video with your friends and share the knowledge so guys please uh, and like my video and comment your queries feel free to subscribe the channel medico stranger thank you guys keep supporting and next day we'll study a major topic in the histology portion that is the development and growth of the tooth this topic is very important and we'll study in the next video okay thank you guys keep supporting